What's up guys and welcome back to On The Brick. As I'm sure you know by now, there was some drama with Brickfall. However, they very, very kindly reached out to me and asked if we wanted to talk and make a video for my channel, hopefully explaining things and calming things down. What follows is the unedited and raw version of that discussion slash interview. Those of you who don't want to or can't spend the next 40 minutes listening to it to have a brief summary, Brickfall are very good people. People. There were some misconceptions, a lot more anger than there should have been, but neither of us wanted problems or trouble with the other. They will allow me to use their instructions in appropriate amounts and really do want me to continue reviewing their sets. They also made it clear that I can reach out to them if I have any issues or questions regarding sets or instructions. Basically, please do not harass them, hate them, or any of the other things that I've seen happen. They are genuinely good people. Also, I am a little sick, so my voice probably sounds worse than usual. Anyway, here is the full conversation. Hello. Hey, how's it going, man? Uh, it's going well. How are you? Good, good. Can you hear my mic and everything okay? Yeah, I can hear you perfectly fine. Okay, okay. What is, uh, my name is Charlie, by the way. I don't know if I, is your, if you ever say your official name in your, uh, I'm, I'm you Jonathan. Can I call you on the brig? No, you, you okay. can call me Jonathan. That's fine. Okay. It does sound a little weird to be like, so what do you think on the brick? Um, <laughs> yeah, you're all good. Okay, okay. Well, it's good to meet you, man. Yeah, you, do you, you need too, to officially. Set up do you need to set up any recording stuff? Or you, um, I should be good to go on that again? side. Okay. Yeah, okay. I should be good to go. Well, I mean, I guess this is a video for your channel, so you're welcome to direct it as you want to, but I feel like it's probably just good for us to talk about stuff, kind of clear the air about a little bit of this YouTube drama that's been going on just because it's I don't like drama you you've told me you don't like drama and yet we somehow find ourselves in the middle of it and um, I think people especially in the comments section of YouTube and the internet itself <laughs> is really designed to facilitate drama um, it, yeah, really that's like very to fair to say the, yeah they do like to assume the worst often so when things are taken a certain way or things are said a certain way, they can be interpreted pretty negatively. Um, it, yeah, that's also very yeah. true. So I may as well start off because um, we initially contacted you um, and you made a, a, a NABU N1 Starfighter review of our uh, instructions for Brick Vault, which is awesome, by the way. I'm glad that you are making reviews and it's cool to see that other people are making reviews of our models um it's it's got to be time consuming and expensive and it's something that we're like both excited to see but also like oh yeah there's there's not too many reviewers out there so every review that happens is also very important and affects the sales of our models in a big way um we were disappointed to see your opinion on our model but we did understand uh the criticisms of the instructions they're old instructions. They're probably, I will say they're probably some of the harder to follow instructions in our store. Um, and they were specifically designed because that designer wanted to use that software at that time. And our kind of premise for launching anything is like, well, if we can build it using the instructions without any help from the designer, then other people should be able to do that as well. Nonetheless, there you're not the only person to have had trouble putting together the N1. And um, I think your review of our instructions is totally fair. And uh, generally, and generally speaking, any comments or criticism is absolutely fair, whether or not we agree or disagree with it. Um, what happened though with that video is during your critique, and I do believe you weren't intending to distribute our instructions. I 100% believe that, but as you're going through critiquing our instructions, uh, Jack and I counted, and if I remember correctly, I think you showed just about every page of the instructions except for maybe one. And, um, you know, uh, we spend a lot of our time going after eBay resellers, Amazon resellers, Chinese companies, you name it. There's people that just try and resell our stuff. And so our tactic with those people especially, and seems to be the only thing that works, is to be aggressive with them. And so... Um, and I think that's something that, that became very clear as the emails and the conversations went on, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
but yeah, we start off aggressive because we find if we start off kind of like, hey, um, by the way, love what you're doing. Can you not sell our stuff? You know, <laughs> well, most of it's people reselling, which is not what you were doing. You had posted it there, which would have allowed anybody else, in our opinions anyway, to rebuild the model without <coughs> having to buy the instructions from us if they were willing to take the time and go through your video and like screen cap the images or just pause the video. Yeah. Um, so we sent you an aggressive email and knowing you now and knowing your response now, I do think it was a bit aggressive. Um, I do feel like I need to just sort of explain where that came from though, as I did, which is we just don't have the time to sort of, uh, come off and try and buddy up with everybody initially. Usually it's about taking something down. Yeah, and, and so that and kind of started off this drama between us. I think um, it's fair to say. Yeah, oh uh, yeah. I mean, and and in your in in your defense, that was something that you did explain in a in a future email during that day. Um, and if you know, I, it's on me because I did not share that part of the email in the in the subsequent video. Um, like you said, I had no intention of, you know, infringing your copyright or selling your stuff for free or anything like that. I was just trying to make a critique and you're wanting me to take down the video, I think was completely fair. And I want to make sure that's clear. I had no issue with, with that. Um, but like, like you stated clearly the the issue was the aggression, but um, as yeah. you've said, like it's completely understandable why you can't always go a nicer route when you're dealing with who knows how many other people and the same issue. Yeah, and I think the just the general like combination of things creates an unfortunate image of us and not how I want us to come off as is because it's your most critiquing video of us, I would say. Um, I think it's the only negative and... thing I have about you, actually, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. And it was, and because of that, it was brought to our attention. Uh, people were like commenting about it and stuff. And we we're like, what? And so we, we found it because of that. And then we noticed all your instructions there. Um, had it been a positive video and you still showed all the instructions in there saying how good they were, you know, we would have still asked you to remove the video, but the video was negative. So it can be framed as we don't like negative criticism of our content. And I guess it is fair to say we don't love negative criticism, but we do like criticism because it does help us make a better product. Especially fair criticism allows us to look at the weak points of our models. We can talk with our designers, up our design standards, figure out what people are struggling with or having trouble with. Um, and so, and I would like to say just for the record, the N1 is going through at the very least an instructions redesign. My three-year-olds trying to come into my office right now you're good i got hey, my buddy. cat trying to climb on my lap yeah jeff can you uh walk out for a sec thanks buddy can you close the door uh, yeah. yeah thank you bud um so we are redesigning it and we were planning on doing that but certainly your video um was a catalyst for getting that uh underway i think so, that's helpful I mean, to know the, yeah, and that is that is like a real world reaction to critique videos. Um, we're not just gonna see it and be like, "Well, this is BS. This guy like doesn't know what he's talking about." No, we're gonna look at it and be like, "Yeah, that's fair." And, um, and I think that's incredibly important to reiterate. Like what you said was, even if the video had been positive, it wasn't like your reaction wasn't because the negative was video. It was because I showed too much of the instructions, uh, and I right. just want that to. I, I want that to be clear that it's like like you said you accept the criticism it wasn't that you were like oh i hate this video let's take it down that that wasn't the issue and i've seen so many people asking me about that and saying that that i want to make sure that's that mostly it's that's mostly what we're getting also is like oh hey why don't you just accept the criticism and it's like it's not it's not our issue the criticism isn't our issue there are a few other negative reviews out there of our products you know and we look at them we're like oh well i don't like that being out there but they're not uh, showing all of our instructions. Also in your email, you, uh, the latest email to us, you did ask if you could show steps, you know, to help illustrate the points that you're talking about. And that's totally fair. And I think that's kind of what fair use is designed for is to show relevant bits of something that might be intellectual property to better explain a point. But like, you know, 
I don't know, uploading Star Wars and then doing a commentary track over the whole thing is yeah, that that's completely different. Strike. Yeah. So like, yeah, there's fair use is kind of one of the grayest areas of the internet right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> certainly not worth okay. getting into an argument over, but um, yeah. Anyway, that's kind of where we were is we just weren't happy with showing almost all of the instructions on your video. Yeah. And I, I think it was also, uh, I mean, there's, there's a lot of other stuff going on as well that should be taken into account. Like, uh, in, in the Dear Brick Vault video, I say that I had literally just finished making a video about you, which is 100% what happened. I had literally just hit export on my video about you, which, uh, for the record, is an ongoing series that I've made, because I've made videos about, like, Clone Army Customs, Star Wars mm -hmm. Fanatics, AB Figures, pretty much any uh, custom seller, whether it's instructions or minifigures, I want to do a review on, and so I just happened to be doing the video about you when that email came in on top of that we have the whole world situation going on right now which has everyone extra tense and yeah. <laughs> tired and um ready to join in yeah. some internet drama yeah even you know, if it's about plastic toys yeah and and like i said it wasn't my intention but i fully understand that it's what happens yeah. um and and yeah, and it's like, it's just, it was an unfortunate cacophony of everything that just came together and caused what shouldn't have been a problem to be a bigger, a, a bigger problem. Yeah, um, the, the second video you made, I felt kind of escalated things a little bit. Um, which which was again wasn't my in intention, there. but I fully understand that's what happened. Yeah, yeah. And there was a lot of confusion. I feel also, I, I feel like the second video didn't represent us that well, as there was an email chain between us, and there was a few things from that email chain mentioned, but a few things left out that I felt made us look a little bit more negative. Like you mentioned how we accused you of stealing the instructions, which I think out of context was not the best framing That's uh, fair. for us. Because uh, your first video that you did on the review of the N1, you used email snippets from a different buyer, who I believe is one of your Patreon supporters. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. So to to make this just clear for my viewers, so uh, the the email snippet you're talking about came from my best friend Alec. I've known him since seventh grade, so 13, 14 years now. He also is one of my Patreon supporters because he's my best friend. Um, but he loves custom Lego as much as I do. We've That's part of how we've bonded over the years. Um, and so he bought and built your Navi Starfighter uh, I, whenever he sent you that email. Actually, I don't, I'm don't. not entirely right. sure when that was. Um, but it was before I did. Not too much before I did. Um, but we he just shared his experiences with, with me and... Um, I know he was way more frustrated at it than I was, um, because yeah. I mean he he. To, to, I mean to be perfectly clear to my viewers, he wasn't as nice to you as I would have liked. <laughs> I saw the email he sent you, and I and you know I do apologize it's, on that. You behalf. know it's fair. Um, people get frustrated with us, and one of the hardest things to communicate with the selling our models is that they're going to be way harder than a normal Lego model. Uh, like if Lego could make their models look like this and be this durable they would but that's the catch right that's what lego has to do the trade-off with which is why you get lego models that look far less aesthetically pleasing or less accurate to the movie models but you can swoosh them around and your kid can build them and yeah that's really hard to convey sometimes some people say it should be obvious but um i don't always i don't really agree with that because it's hard to know where somebody's coming from when they buy our models and we get a lot of first-time buyers that we're teaching people how to buy lego through bricklink you know is half of the the troubleshooting we do with people um and so you know these are people coming in not having any experience in the mock world now trying to build models that are incredibly difficult compared to traditional lego models but getting back to just some of the confusion in that second video um we were confused that you were not the person whose text you had posted in your initial video. So we said, wait, did you wait? So you're not the person whose email you're quoting in your video. How do we even know you bought the instructions? And so 
um, that was when we were initially having our conversation. And I feel like we got framed in sort of a negative, more accusatory light on that one. And I think we we had a fair right to be a bit confused about the material showing up in the video. I think that's is, perfectly fair, yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, anyway, the, the second video certainly rubbed us the wrong way. Um, we didn't feel good about it, but... Um, we always, you know, I built my career um, on my gaming YouTube channel critiquing video games, you know. And before that, I got a degree in art, and they teach you how to learn how to take critique there. It's one of the most important things. And I fully appreciate understand, and understand the importance of critique because it's not easy to be a critiquer. Uh, you can often get a lot of hate or backlash for it, but ultimately your goal is to make the product better um and so that's just something that i appreciate and do understand and you're critiquing our stuff to not only inform the consumer but you're also giving us feedback so that we can make it better yeah i mean um, most of the stuff that i have from you is, is to say the least amazing i mean the, your your sets and your channel are why i started mine because I've been following you since I think you had like five or six hundred subscribers ever since you before you That's even awesome. put out you know your your first sets. Um, For sure, yeah, we weren't even probably doing mocks at that point. I, I don't, I really don't think you were. I think like I, I can't even remember. I remember watching your your video on the Imperial Shuttle UCS set and then mm -hmm. buying it because of that video. Um, but I just wanted to. You know, like I, I saw your your videos, I saw your reviews, and I didn't see many other people making videos on your sets, and so I wanted yeah. to to do that, and and because I already owned about like five or six of them at that point, and I just wanted to to share them since I enjoyed most of them as much as I did. Yeah, yeah, and that's awesome, man, and uh, like it makes me feel good to hear that from you. Like it's awesome. Uh, we're we're just as big a Lego fans, you know, when I started this channel, honestly, I was like, it's like, if we can just break even, but I'll have a ton of Lego, then I'll consider that a win. That's you know? my goal right and now. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, um, it's, and it's funny, but it's like, yeah, I just love having all these awesome Lego models and being able to, you know, some of the builders in our store now, Jarek, who made the X-Wing, um, He's like a guy that I've been following for maybe 10 years on Flickr now. And doing this, I've been able to like talk with him and we chat almost on a daily basis about models and things he's working oh, yeah. on. And he's and, been very open about about things with me too. I mean, he's been talking with yeah. me all day about uh, you know, about his X-Wing actually. And, and uh, yeah, because like I said, I did take down that video because... I don't think, after thinking about things, I don't think it was a fair or proper critique of either his design or the yeah. set as a whole. Should, should we spell that out for people who, should we get, move on to the next phase of the, the drama escalation? I, yeah, so prob probably, so, I guess I guess so, yeah. So, okay, so today things kind of exploded further. Um there was you posted an x-wing review of our x-wing i did that yeah um, tuesday october 13th yeah yeah and um the review i'm not going to critique the review itself because it's your review and you have your opinions of of what you like in terms of structural durability versus aesthetics and stuff like that but um it kind of came to light in the comments that the model was not built out of official lego bricks um <clears throat> and I, you know, you start looking closer and you're like, oh yeah, there aren't official Lego bricks in this. And it wasn't disclosed during the video. And so this led to a bunch of confusion in the comments and other people, I think I saw another comment or a suggestion that was like about your other models not being official Lego. And I looked back at your Nabu N1 video and I tried to look closely and I think it's just because maybe your camera's a little low res or it was slightly out of focus or something. But you can't, it's hard to make out the Lego logo on the studs. So I thought that most, if not all of your reviews were being done with fake Lego. Um, and the problem we have, I have a lot of problems with fake Lego, which we don't necessarily need to get into, but. Yeah, that's problem, a whole other conversation. Yeah, It's a whole other economics conversation to be had. But um, the problem we have with fake Lego 
Um, and we have some in our studio. We can always tell because they'll show up in BrickLink orders and stuff. Is that the um, there's the uh, they have different tension values. They have different. I forgot what they call it in the Lego community. It's there's uh, uh, like I, the. I know locking. what you're talking about. Yeah, that yeah. Like the, the I want to say grip clutch. That's it. Clutch strength um, is different on fake Lego. And granted, some fake Lego is pretty good. But especially with really, really, really tricky designs, like I would say the N1 would probably be almost impossible to put together using fake Lego because the clutch strength of official Lego parts is so important. And even within the official Lego realm now, we're noticing bigger differences in clutch strength and it's making things that were possible with older molds of Lego impossible with the newer molds, which is really crazy. Um, but anyway... Um, we felt that a critique uh, on the X-Wing's durability specifically being done with fake Lego that was never at any point in the video disclosed that it was fake Lego was pretty unfair. So we made a PSA and honestly at that point I had thought that most of your videos were done with fake Lego. I didn't understand that it was only the X-Wing at this point. Yeah, so and, I, and that's, I do want to say that it was just the X-Wing. All, all the other videos about you specifically at least were... Yeah. Uh, where that I do have like the uh, an old old uh, what's it called ne Nebula B one ne ne what is it called the Nebulon yeah Nebulon uh, flat that's not Lego but when it comes to the brick vault specific ones it was just the X wing gotcha gotcha yeah and so I mean that was basically our thing is like Jarek you know I think with the X wing he spent months perfecting that you know and then it's like oh man seeing a review critiquing durability with non-official Lego parts that we'd never build in and would never recommend anyone to build our models in. Um, that definitely got us upset. So we did a little bit of a community post on our YouTube channel, um, essentially calling you out for it. And at that time, again, I didn't understand that it was only the X-Wing that was fake Lego, um, which you later clarified to me, but in my defense, you didn't disclose that the X-Wing was fake Lego in the video. So there's essentially no way for me to know if it was more than just one video since there was no disclosure on it. And, and again, I so. think that's completely fair from your side. Um, I, I To be fair to myself, I never had any intention of misleading anyone. It was something I didn't realize, I should say, that I had to disclose. Um, but looking back on it, it's obvious that I should have and that, you know... It, I, I want to try to stick to real Lego going forward. Like I told you, I have one more set that's not. Um, and I am going to disclose it when that comes out, to be perfectly fair. But gotcha. like, like I was saying, that's why I took down the X-Wing video, because uh, after seeing all the comments and talking to you and talking to Jarek, um, I don't think it was as fair of a review as it should have been. And I think... you know, And I, and I don't want to keep it up there and start and, and spread something that's not true or something that's false that could potentially hurt either you or him. Uh, so that's why, like, I wanted to take it down and then eventually get the pieces in actual LEGO, build it properly, and then do an actual fair and proper review of that set. Yeah. Well, that's cool, and thank you for saying that. And, um, obvious, I think <laughs> certainly we didn't handle this as good as we could have and I would have liked to have handled it better. Sometimes it's hard to understand how people are going to react before you interact with them, if that makes sense. So you have that's to try and... Especially nowadays, that's completely fair. <laughs> yeah. So we're definitely, definitely not happy with how we responded, knowing what we now... Knowing what we know about you now, uh, we would have taken a different approach but uh, at the time, just not understanding, you know, somebody's posting our instructions here, somebody's doing a review on our sets, but with uh, non-official Lego parts, I assume Chinese parts or something like that. Um, yeah, it definitely rubbed us the wrong way. So we, we piled onto the drama and um, things got worse today, but then we emailed, we talked about it, we decided to take down some of our posts about each other and, um, move on in a positive way where you're reviewing, critiquing our stuff. We have no issue with that. Um, Which I really and, appreciate. Uh, and I mean, and you know, like both, even if we did have an issue with it, it shouldn't be an issue regardless because anybody should be free to critique stuff 
as long as you know you're not posting instructions out there or um i would say perhaps misrepresenting the set with fake lego um and not disclosing it um that that's our concern right because like we've built with fake lego before um and not by intention but sometimes we'll have trouble putting a model together and be like why is this thing just not sticking and then the part that we're actually having a problem with is actually a knockoff lego that showed up in our bricklink order or something which i've had um, happen plus, a few times yeah oh sure it shows up all the time we have a little bin of fake lego that we're like whenever we're sorting out parts we're like oh this isn't real lego and I have to put it aside but yeah and we have kind of a a not happy history with Chinese resellers because they just steal our stuff most of the time and sell it, uh, instructions included often, and there's very little we can do about it because which, they operate in China. Which is uh, why I always try to emphasize that I do buy the instructions legally through you guys or any designer that, I, you know, that I'm showing off. Um, I know... I, I'm obviously not personally, but I know all about you know Lepin and, and the knockoff sure. side and everything, and yeah, I know as, how that as, affects as you. We. So, I, I do want to make sure that I always support you or any designer as, as much as I can. Um, and so, like with the X-wing, I you know I do I did legally buy your instructions. It was years ago at this and point, I, and or, I do or whatever it came believe out. you on that point, and I'm not um, attacking you on that. Oh, I I know. Like I know. Uh, I yeah. just I just want to make sure of that because, uh, like you said, there are who knows how many sellers out there now that yeah. sell your bricks and sell or sell your design with your instructions and you don't get anything out of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's one one more thing I'd love to talk about a little bit here, if yeah. you don't mind. Um, uh, the weird thing about the market that we're in right now, it's a niche market, right? I think it's fairly safe to say that like instruction stores and selling instructions is kind of like, it's sort of picking up a little steam, but it's also sort of a very weird niche area still. And thus doing reviews on it is, um, there's not a lot of reviews on our stuff out there. So in fact, you're one of the few people that I see doing actual regular reviews on custom instruction stuff, which I think is awesome. But it also, um, you know, it's like when a movie launches, you have thousands of movie critics coming out and giving their opinion on it, you know. And so you have a lot of different opinions and different people like different types of things. And um, like with the N1, um, you know, it's hard to watch one of the only critique videos out there saying that it's a really bad model when Jack and I really like it. And, um, I mean, it's a beautiful just, looking model. I just had trouble yeah. keeping it together. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, it's hard because it's like, we're like, hmm, we build it in the studio, we make sure we can do it, and then we send it out, and then other people are unable to do it. So it's like, dang, we have to, we kind of judged it wrong in terms of what we thought, I think, the average builder would be able to do or what we're comfortable with is an acceptable technique that maybe other people aren't as familiar or comfortable with. Um, he did make a little Naboo stress test of our model, showing that one, people have been saying now that we glue our model together, which I know is not something that you perpetrated, but as you know how YouTube works, yeah. Um, they see that you glued yours together to get it to work, and now they're like, Brick Vault must have done it to theirs. So Jack put together a little unlisted video that were kind of linking in like our N1 video and stuff like that, showing him further kind of stress testing and pulling it apart and putting it back together in the areas that we saw that um, you're having issues with. Um, and again, we are working on making that model better. And it's just the constant battle between how good you want it to look or how accurate you want it to look and how durable you want it to be. And I'm getting a sense from watching more of your reviews that you definitely favor the durability side over maybe the perfectly aesthetic side. And that's a totally fair um, critique and or desire from the models. And I think Jack and I personally prefer aesthetics over durability, but there is a, certainly a limit to where our durability, uh, uh, what we, what were acceptable in terms of like sending out instructions, you know. Um, and there have been models in the past that we've, uh, completely removed from the store at great time and expense to us and decided to just do redesigns on our own because we didn't think that the durability was good enough and the U-Wing was one of those models. I do remember that, yeah. 
a big structural redesign and other things like that. So, um, or even like even your, though your some ghost. of our old models have kind of definitely need are in need of a little bit of love in the instruction side, um, we're not a we're not a brand. I don't want to represent our brand as somebody that just puts it out there and is like, all right, it's gone forever. Um, we are constantly looking at making updates and fixing little things that people have issues with. Um, or, or even even like I, yeah. uh, I think I mentioned it in the X-Wing video, but if not, even like the, the ghost set that you have, which is, you know, over 10,000 pieces or something like that, and you spent who knows how long redesigning it, redoing mm. the instructions, and it's like that's no yeah. small task, and that can't be understated either. Like that's massively impressive to do. And it, and it shows your dedication to not just putting stuff out there, but to making sure that it is the best product that it can be. Yeah, yeah. And we're redesigning a few sets right now that uh, I don't really want to mention which ones they are, but as sets have been out for a while, especially popular ones, um, they eat up all the parts on BrickLink, and people have a hard time getting them. Because if you know, you're starting to sell a lot and a lot, and everybody buys all the parts that are available, um, we're now, you know, we redesign old sets that the parts have dried up for, and we come up with replacement parts for them. And we don't necessarily make a YouTube video promoting it, but we'll kind of do a stealth update to something and be like, okay, here's a little change on this model here. Now you can get the parts for it. So, well, I remember um, I, I bought your uh, microfighter fleet a while ago. I think like the day you made the video. Um, okay. And then quite recently, like, you know, who knows how much what time is anymore after this year but quite recently you you uh released a an update for the for those sets but like you said you didn't make a video you just sent out the instructions for them you just sent out an email yeah yeah and that's generally what we like to do unless it's like a complete overhaul to a model so if, if we're like really redesigning something so that it's like completely different um then we'll make an update video or something like that uh but yeah um, it's important to us to like make sure our products are consistently like good products and valuable and stuff. And I think when we first started our store, things were just the more more difficult than they are now in terms of instruction making software. And uh, we just didn't go back and update some of the models that we probably should what have. And the N one is definitely uh, one of the trickier ones in that realm. <laughs> And I also uh, that's that's not only a difficult model to build digitally because of all the weird angles and stuff, but um, yeah, in figuring out how to put the instructions together in a way that is is easy, uh, you know, it takes a long time. You kind of have to build it yourself while you're doing it and say, okay, is this going to be the easiest way to explain how to put this together, or should I have this assembled in front of that? You know, so there's there's lots of little things, and it's hard it's hard making good instructions, but we do our best. I yeah I uh I don't know how much of my channel you've seen but I somewhat designed a mini fix scale UT80 uh and I was I'm trying to make instructions for that but like you said it's a it's a hell of a process to do to have to figure out how to yeah. do all the individual sections and make it both readable and so and followable and have it make sense and then have it actually work like it's a process that I can I can understand and uh, in terms of you know you guys going back and fixing older instructions, I think it's also uh, it's only fair for people to realize like it's not like you're just sitting there not doing anything most days. You know you're probably incredibly busy most days. Uh, yeah, and, yeah, we're and, constantly working on stuff. Like that's the crazy thing about this job is is like um, there's basically endless stuff to do. You know, so if I'm not working on that working i'm work if i'm not working on producing a video we're working on a new model we're working on uh an old model updating it we're working on new ways of promoting our products or something like that like it is kind of endless so i i do rem I, one of your critiques against us was that it was relatively easy to update and i was like well, I well if you have the you have the time maybe but <laughs> you know that there's yeah. still a lot of it other stuff that goes that we by should update and we are updating um the other thing that uh, you suggested which is a good suggestion in an ideal world was to have us do all the instructions ourselves rather than letting each designer kind of do their instructions um and that was really tricky at the start because the software that people were using was all different. Now I would say Studio has really solidified a lot of how people can make their stuff. Some people still use uh, different software here and there. 
um, and we've been able to kind of regulate our format much better than we were able to before. But in the early days, especially, there was like five competing instruction making software, and every designer had their different standards for durability and how instructions looked. And sometimes it got difficult to like try and argue with people or tell them to make it in a different way. And so I would say almost everything that's been made in the past year and a half or so once everybody kind of switched over to studio has been more or less um, kind of at our quality standards of what we like in terms of instructions making and step-by-step -step processes rather than more, shall we call it, exploratory attempts for <laughs> assembling uh, new models. So, and I think that's, yeah, uh, it, it's hard for us to do it all though, is the yeah. problem is, is just like, um, based on how we work with our designers, you know, uh, we, I don't think we'd really have the time to do it all on our own without yeah, changing the revenue model that we have for our store to be way more in favor for us rather than our builders. And ultimately that's not our goal. We want our builders to, um, basically be able to make some money off of this and support their, their hobby. And so if we do all the, the work, work, then all of a sudden it's like, okay, well, now you get a smaller and smaller and smaller cut, and then eventually they're just not going to want to do it anymore. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we kind of invested in training people how to do it as well. Um, and I think... New builders come on without the skills, and we'll even teach them how to do it rather than just try and reverse engineer what they've built. Or well, well uh, the only reason that I even know how to make instructions was, again, by because I had a model that I wanted to send into you guys and I needed to learn how to do that. Um, oh, what did we get back to you? Or yeah, no, it was months ago. It was okay. for, uh, it was, it was for like the interstellar ranger. Interstellar if, ranger. Okay. Jack might've responded he, to that. Yeah, I so think we switch was, off sometimes. In between oh yeah. You're right. Um, emails. but, uh, yeah. oh, oh it, that, I was going to say that was one of the things that Jarek actually helped me understand. Cause he, uh, to, he he wasn't uh, too on board with me saying that about you guys either that you should be making all the instructions um, and he helped me understand that um, I don't know why I assumed that studio is like the instruction maker on studio is being used for longer than it has been um, I just yeah I, no it's relatively it's weird how much has changed just since we started the instruction store and we haven't even been doing this that long yeah uh, but our workflow and process has almost completely changed and that's been purely based on the software that's been available and what people are actually using more regularly. So yeah, it's just such, it's, it's because it's a niche market, right? This isn't like big budget software that everybody's using. It's not like video editing or something yeah, exactly. where there's plenty of well, uh, research software out there that everybody knows how to use. It's very niche, but, um, think, thankfully things have gotten a lot easier. So, um, most of the stuff we've done recently has been a lot easier to sort of make instructions for i say easy but i mean you know easier than it used to be yeah yeah easier than the absolute nightmare that it <laughs> okay. used to be. <laughs> well and see i mean and seeing the nabu starfighters and again talking with with jarek more about how his process was like that became so much more clear after after my videos about you is that yeah like the especially like you said in the earlier days it could not have been a simple thing to do at all and uh you know i was you know, fully mistaken in thinking that it would just be a simple fix for you guys. Um, yeah. And realizing that now it's like, you know, if, if you have something built in studio now, it, it does make it easier. But like you've been saying, that doesn't mean that it will be an easy process anyway. It'll just be easier sure. than it would have been. <laughs> for sure. And it, yeah, it's weird. I'd like to say it, it depends on part count, but it really just depends on like model design too, you know? And we, our biggest model in the store is 20,000 parts for the Star Destroyer. Oh yeah. And I mean, we didn't make instructions for that. We couldn't, we can't afford to make instructions for that. You know, like half of this is, it's, it's all like hobby time, right? It's the guy who wanted to do a giant Star Destroyer and sell instructions. Like he put in hundreds and hundreds of hours to that. Of which, if you had to put a dollar value behind the money he's making from it, you know, you'd be like, well, this is a not a good investment of your time, but because we're all, you know, Lego hobbyists, Lego enthusiasts, it's worth it to us. But um, has anyone huge, bought that? There's a huge amount of work. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. I plan to one day, but <laughs> hopefully when this channel grows. It's, it's honestly, it's one of those things where I'm like, oh, it's just another Star Destroyer. But when I see it in person, um, 
it is it's my favorite model that we have in our studio i you just see it and you're like that's incredible and most people don't understand that it's lego when they first see it it doesn't uh, look like it when you even in the video it it, it looks like a like a I don't want to say Hasbro model, but you know what I mean. It it doesn't yeah. look like a Lego build because of how detailed and intricate it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, that builder Caleb, I believe, is his name. Um, he's uh, he really likes to avoid studs at all costs. So I know there's a lot of people who who do that. Yeah, I'm more of a like thirty to twenty to thirty percent stud guy, and then like rest smooth. I, I like being reminded that a model's Lego. I don't need it to all be studs. Um, but, you know, everybody's got their own preference yeah. on that. <laughs> well, and, and that reminds me of something yeah. I wanted to say earlier about my reviews, where uh, it just like with, with movie reviews or video game reviews, I'm sharing my opinion, and mm -hmm. for anyone listening, it should not be taken as the end-all be-all for whatever I'm reviewing. It, it really should just be more information for the viewers to... You know, yeah. to go and then make their own decision based off of the information that they have. I know it doesn't always work that way, and, you know, people watch these reviews and they, they think, okay, well, that's it. You know, I said the Naboo is bad, so the Naboo is bad. But, you, like you said, and, like, there's so many comments under that video that are saying they had no issues building it. You know, yeah, and, and then there are other people who are agreeing with you. So it's like... And it just shows that, you know, yeah. again, like, my video is just my experience it doesn't mean that's how everyone's experience is going to be yeah yeah and that's been tricky for us to kind of like absorb because um really you're kind of one of the few youtube reviewers out there reviewing our uh, other people's models regularly so we're like well it's kind of like what this guy says uh is how our model is going to be perceived now um i which i don't think is totally true but um it's the know, internet though a, unfortunately a very, big impact on it um like i mean in that video that, that video exploded for some reason yeah well i mean i think as you're finding out um uh drama sells if you will even if your video wasn't being overly dramatic just um titles and things being phrased in certain ways can certainly draw a crowd so um, that said one thing that i do want to do and i did want to tell you on this call is that uh i'm probably well sorry let me let me start i am going to take down the deer brickfall video and redo it properly um okay. like you said i don't think i e even though i tried to you know be nice about you guys and tell people to support you obviously that didn't come across that well and there are some more negative things in there than i would have liked and so i want to be fair um uh, and obviously that video is causing this drama to continue and keeping it up will cause it to continue because even if we put up this video people are going to see that might not see this one it's going to continue yeah, things so i want to take that down and uh redo what the original video was going to be basically and and okay. well we appreciate yeah. that i mean yeah thank you for that yeah That's i just awesome. i really like i said i don't I don't want drama and I don't want problems. And if I need to do that, then I'm more than willing to do that. Cool. And um, one thing that I would just want to say also is like, um, we want you to stay an honest reviewer, even though we're sort of establishing a, a, a line of communication between ourselves. You know, um, you know, if you want to bash a model that you don't like, please go ahead and do it. And we'll, we will take your criticism and stuff. Um, but, um, we have a line of communication now, so if you have any questions, um, just ask us, you know. Um, yeah, I don't think you you need to um, make assumptions about, like, what our agenda was. Not agenda, I don't know what I'm tr I'm trying to say. Like, in the video you made, you were making a bunch of assumptions and stuff about us, and I was like, why not just, you could just ask us. Um, so that's, we're here for that. If you want meanwhile, I'm sitting here questions. saying the same thing. That That's a very good point, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, man, I'm glad we've been able to have this talk and sort of um, hash things out. Um, I yeah, and I, kind of I hope this video helps things. To, yeah, smooth things over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, anyway, thank you for reviewing our models, critiquing our stuff. Um, well, thank you for making exploded them. exploded in a way that I didn't want it to. Um, no, but I – and I, and I want to – say one last thing to my viewers is that this interview was entirely your idea you were the one that 
wanted to to do this and and, and reach out and solve this you know it, it neither of us wanted this to be an issue or to be as big as it was and i really do appreciate you reaching out to me and giving me the opportunity for us to talk and clear things up yeah well and likewise thank you for agreeing to do it and um being open about it yeah well i mean i don't want my i don't want my viewers to go and start you know yelling at you or insulting you or anything like that so it's it's a lose lose <laughs> unfortunately yeah <laughs> unfortunately but i mean again thank you for the thank you for the chance and you know thank you for making the models that you do and putting them out there you know like yeah. i would not be where i am today without your stuff so well we're really happy to be able to do what we do and of course they're not all our models we work with plenty of other well, yeah. extremely yeah talented builders but yeah, yeah i gotta yeah. give them a shout out because they are that's the completely fair you know we're here but yeah all right, man. Well, thank you so much. And um, again, if you have any questions or or any whatever, just reach out to me. And we're here. We got email now. We got Discord. We can we can yeah. talk about stuff. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. Cool. All right, man. All right. See you later. Have a good day.